Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Bindon on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the Good Life experience. To understand who Jesus really is, you need to understand certain principles about life, which we'll be sharing with you today. The new creation in Christ is a present our reality. It is a now fact. Mm. It is not a tomorrow thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus said that mm. as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. Mm. We have a lot of religions in the systems, but Christianity is none of them. This is the NCC Hub with Dr. David Binder. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is such a joy once again to welcome you to today's special episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion. The Good Life Devotion is a daily devotional teaching of the truth of God's word aimed at bringing the body of Christ onto a state of maturity where we can manifest our divine nature to make our world a better place and to become effective in the work of the ministry to bring many more humans into God's eternal plan for their lives in Christ Jesus. By the grace of God, the glory devotion is on many platforms at various times of the day so that you can choose the platform that best suits your pattern of life and remain consistently connected to truth because of the serial nature of our discussions every week. If the Lord touches your heart to be part of those who are making it happen, there are three simple ways you can do that. You can begin praying wherever you are. You can proceed to make sure you recommend it to all the people within your sphere of contact or influence and ensure that you call us to contribute to put it on platforms that we are not yet on. We stepped into an amazing session of the year where we started our NCC Hub discussions and this is going to be another amazing week. And this uh, week we are going to start off by going into the National Theatre as it was in the year 2020 to look at excerpts of that which the Lord fed us with. Then we'll come back to throw light on a few portions as the Spirit of God will lead us. Before we share a word of prayer and go into the National Theatre and watch some portions as it was in the year 2020, I'd like to introduce to us again our distinguished guest on the panel of discussion today. Um, I have with me our own dear CEO of the Final Global Movement, also the head pastor of the New Creatures Fellowship, in the person of uh, Reverend Dr. Felix Oponi. Once again, welcome. Thanks sir, for the opportunity. God bless you. And again, we have with us here the head of the Committee for the New Creation Conference. He was with us um, last week as we had a beautiful time. And Pastor Fazal is with us again today. First of all, welcome. Thank you so much, sir. God yeah, blessed. All right, so uh, shall we share in a word of prayer as we start off for today? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory for the opportunity we have once again to receive of your truth in these discussions. We transmit life and spirit to every viewer, every reader, and every listener and cause their lives to be transformed to another level in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wow. So, right away, we want to step into watching how it was in the year 2020 in the National Theater, and then we shall be back to have some discussion. Let us watch this. You know, God brought you here this year for something specific. To settle you in the reality of your being a new creature. And then push you into the crisis of endeavoring to live like that. 
to settle you in the reality of being a new creature and push you into the crisis of endeavoring to live like that. The reason is that the moment it settles in your heart that you are a new creature, you step into a region of crisis, in quote. And crisis here is that your body, the family systems, the world, and everything else tries to make you live as a normal person. And yet you know you are not normal. So there's a, a region of crisis. But as you push a bit into that region, there, there comes a flip. And you are flipped to the other side. And there's no more return. You perpetually begin to manifest. Hallelujah. So by the time you live here tomorrow, you would have been so settled in the fact that you are a new creature and you will not accept any other life except the new creation life. Hallelujah. Praise God. So are you ready? So this year, we are going to look at the subject, the power of born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. The power of born again. Oh, glory to God. The power of born again. Now, by way of introduction, I'd like to state that if you are a child of God, it's very important to give the subject of born again a very serious attention. It's a must that every child of God gives the subject of born again a very serious attention. Giving it enough attention to be sure that you are born again and then to allow your life to be in conformity with what it means to be born again. The reason is because there are a good number of people who are you call Christians who are sitting in churches. They do all the Christian things. They pray go to church, get involved in Christian activities, but they are not born again. And if you are not born again, the Bible is written for the born again. The ultimate goal of the scriptures is to get men to become sons of God. So if someone is not born again, what happens is that he or she reads the Bible he sees what the Bible says his life should be, but his life is far away from what the Bible says. Why? The things are for the born again, and you are not born again. So you cannot get born again results. Once in a while, one who is born again can help you by praying for you. But that will not keep long because you must be able to live your own life. The moment you are born, you are separated from your mother's womb, your mother ceases to live for you. Your mother ceases to breathe for you. For nine months, someone will give you oxygen. But after nine months, you've got to be able to get your own oxygen. So, when people don't understand born again and ensure that they get born again, and they expect born again results, they get frustrated. So, they are in church over years, and they are still living in sin, living under addictions, living in sicknesses, in confusion, and all kinds of things that they know that should not be happening in the life of the born again. But if they will have the attention of God to be able to uh, discover from the scriptures what it means to be born again and actually get born again, then that thing ceases. Then when you discover that you are born again, then the next step is to ensure that your life is in conformity with the born-again life. This is why it's very important 
to understand born again as a child of God. Give that subject a very serious attention as a child of God. Um, I remember in my fifth year in the medical school, I was leading a group. We went to the hospital to win souls and to minister to the sick. And then the, I was leading a group and I was in one ward and they were in the other ward and they gave me a report that there was this young man who was sick and they were trying to minister to him and he was just being repulsive. So I went to him and tried to inquire why he was being unfriendly. Then so, I'm a Christian and he mentioned the name of the denomination and he even said that he's um, um, a leader in church. But I said, I don't have anything to do with these born again people. Then I'm asking, so how are you then a Christian? I didn't ask him there. So it struck me, and I came back to study the scriptures. And I realized that the scriptures spoke profusely about born again. Jesus spoke about born again. The Holy Ghost through the Apostle Paul spoke about born again. Through the Apostle John spoke about born again. Through the Apostle Peter spoke about born again. More than two witnesses. And it's not just that it is in the Bible. It is also present truth. Because it's not everything in the Bible that is present truth. So some people say, oh, but it's in the Bible. Some people will say, oh, Ten Commandments, the moment is in the Bible. Are you saying we shouldn't obey some of the Bible? It's in the Bible. And the Bible says that everything that is written is written for our learning. But it's not everything that is present truth for you. For instance, the person who says that the Ten Commandments are in the Bible and so he wants to obey the Bible. He's not going to church with a goat. And yet, bring ye a he goat to the sanctuary in the Bible. Why didn't he take a goat to the church? Because he understands perfectly that that's not present truth, and yet it's in the Bible. Are you following this? So, some people are confused, so, but this person is preaching from the Bible. The fact that it's in the Bible does not make it present truth. Are you getting that? So, don't get confused about the Bible. The Bible is clear about itself. But some people just always see the Bible. One, the thing must be in the Bible. Two, it must be present truth. If it is in the Bible, but it's not present truth, you can learn the principle behind it and apply. Are you following? So born again is not just in the Bible. It is present truth. And I wondered why mainline orthodoxy had kept this thing as if it's some weird charismatic thing and if they are born again, uh, these are the born again people. Then I began to live. Then, after moving from the humanly frustrating life into the buoyant life of divine nature, I asked myself, how did I come here? Then I noticed it was because I gave born again attention. Then I discovered why the devil tried to subdue that truth in the Bible. Because he knows that when the church knows born again, the church will take its place and the devil cannot run rampage in the world. Listen, the devil is not bothered about, okay, receive Jesus and sing big about God. As long as you sing so great, I mean, great things about God and you cannot do anything about him, he is not bothered. He gets, the Bible said that an heir, as long as he remains a babe, he doesn't differ from a slave. He may be an heir. You can sing, oh, I'm great. My God is great. But as long as you don't know how to use that, the devil is not moved. So the devil is not moved by having people go to church. But he doesn't want them to get truth. Because if they get truth, they'll put him where he belongs. I get it. You know, haven't you seen that people who go to church and say, oh, my God. My God can do a lot of things for me. My God is big. My God is big. Then something small shows up. And he forgets that there is a God. What? That's where the devil didn't want him to get to. Because he was singing about a big God. But remember something shows that he forgets that God is God. Why? He does not understand who he is. And that's why Satan tried to subdue the truth of born again for years. But no more now. The day has changed. We are giving attention to the subjects. Because we have, we have, we have an agenda on the earth. We are not here to eat and drink. We are ambassadors of a kingdom. No nation appoints an ambassador to go and join the other country and be eating and drinking. If you are sent as an ambassador, you represent the interests of your nation. 
We are ambassadors here. And it is time to discover who we are. Are you hearing me? Shall I give the subject attention? So that's why we are going to give attention to born again. Because when you know born again, you will know who you are. Hallelujah. Wow, 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 wow. That was awesome. You know, 2020, like any other year, was also loaded. You know, there's so much that we have heard within these about 10 minutes. And, um, you know, we spoke about why the Lord brought us into that conference that year. You know, can you just do Reverend Enter some more light on what we just said about why the Lord brought us that year and why that is important? Wow. Thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity yeah, to please. be on set with you today. Yes. Um, that particular year was unique mm. in its own because mm. I remember the Spirit of the Lord told us that the impact of that new creation mm. conference was going to be a combination mm. of the, the previous four mm. episodes of the NCC. So yeah. I knew that there was something about that particular NCC that was going to just be the like the turning point mm. in every believer who gives attention to what you were going to mm. share. And no doubt it came out at, to be the power mm. of born again. Power of born again. You know, <laughs> power of born again. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, and um, like you rightly said, um, in a video, the Spirit of God made us know exactly two things to expect mm. from that year. Mm. And that was to get us to settle in the reality that I am really born again. Mm. And once a person gets settled in that reality, mm. it pushes you into a crisis mm. for you to flip, to live the life of the born again. Mm. Because the moment you are born again, you cease to be human. Mm. You are really divine. You are mm. totally different from the human that received mm. Christ. <laughs> wow, well, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Be certain mm. about born again. If there is one thing, viewers, listeners, and readers, that you should never miss in your life, it is getting to a point where you are certain that you are born again. We we'll always say that. doesn't matter how long you keep a wheelbarrow in a garage. It will never turn into a car. It doesn't matter what you do in the body of Christ or in church. If you are not born again, you are not born again. You know, just before we go on break, because we've already had so much time. You know, he mentioned that, and then we said that, okay, when you discover that you are born again, it will push you into a crisis. And when I heard that, I said, so what? we got that to, push, to be pushed <laughs> into a crisis. crisis. I, mean, I mean, but why is that important? Thank you so much, mm. for once again, for this opportunity mm. to be with you on set. You know, it's so important because mm. until you get there, mm. you will accept everything that is human as normal. Mm. Now, you discover in the scriptures who you are as one who is born again, mm. as one who is a child of God. Mm -hmm. And yet, the circumstances around you tell you otherwise. Mm. And that is the point of crisis. Exactly. Where you know who you are, mm -hmm. Yet things around you seem to be telling you mm. otherwise. So it's like you are in a situation where I know this is who I am. Mm -hmm. Yet when I look around, I don't see that. Mm. I don't hear that. Mm. And that period is a point of crisis. Mm. And you begin to ask yourself even more questions, mm. meditate more on who you are, mm. till you, like you mentioned, there's that flip mm. where you step into the reality of <laughs> who you are. And so that crisis really is important to push you mm. into becoming the reality of who you are. Hallelujah. And everybody must have that Hallelujah. crisis. Well, you know, when, when we teach on the new creation, this brings us to the three groups of people. Mm. Those who say, oh, new creation, no, 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 this born again thing, we don't have to do anything, but they just want to be human. Then those who believe it is truth, mm. but this state of crisis, they don't know that it is normal. Mm. Wonderful viewer, if you have believed this thing in the Bible, but you seem to see that, this is what I know, but my feelings, my circumstances don't show that. Don't worry. It means that you've moved to class two. Mm. Yeah. What you should do is to give more attention, like we're going to share, and move from that class two into class three. Because at our level, when we are talking, it is no more crisis. It's no more mm. like uh, trial and error because we have passed the level of crisis. Wow. That's awesome. All right. We want to go on a short break. When we come back, we'll take a look at some other thoughts from the video, which I'll be right back after this break. This November. There is a promise Papa God made to Jesus. 
and you have been called to fulfill that promise be expectant they may call you proud but when you learn to operate in the spirit you will bring solutions and they will enjoy it new creation conference with dr david Bindon. date 10th to 11th november so don't be a christian that you are always afraid of witches and wizards what kind of christian is that these spirits are your meat so anytime they tell that i see you in the bottle you are shaking why were you when they tied you and put you in the bottle where did you sleep if any man be in christ he's a new creature venue national theater accra ghana get ready Wow, praise the Lord. Welcome back, viewers. We've been discussing portions of the New Creation Conference 2020 with my esteemed guest, Reverend Dr. Felix Opone and Pastor Dr. Faisal J. Yeah, welcome back. All right, so in that short video, we also mentioned the reasons why it's important to give the born again message attention. Pastor Faisal, can you trace some more light on wow, that? Wow, thank you so much once again for right. this opportunity and for this mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. You know, there are things in life mm. that require serious attention. Mm. And the most important of them, <laughs> I would say, mm. is giving attention to the word of God mm. concerning who the born again is, mm. especially in this time that we live in. Mm. And in the video we just watched, the Spirit of God made us understand mm. why this is important. Mm. Otherwise, you, you would hear the message and you would think you know, mm. you understand, mm -hmm. yet you don't. Mm. And so you must give it time. Mm. Give it, you know, hours of meditation to understand the message. Why? Because for you, you must be certain that you are really born again. Mm. And it takes giving serious attention to the message of being born again mm. to get to the point where it now becomes a settled fact mm. that I am born, born again. again. And when you are certain of your being born again, mm. nothing can change your mm. mind about it. Nothing mm. can push you around mm. because you know that you are really born again mm. and it takes giving it serious mm. attention. The second thing you taught us from the word of God is that you must give serious attention to this message in order to allow your life to mm. be in conformity with who you mm. are, the born again. If you don't give the message to your attention. You, you cannot live in conformity with mm. the message because, mm. number one, you won't even know what the message is about. So you won't know who you are. Mm. You won't know who you have become mm. as a born again. Mm. And you, you mentioned to us you know, that the ultimate goal of the scriptures <laughs> is to get men born again. Mm. And so if we are studying the scriptures, we are studying so we will understand born exactly. again and we will understand how to live as born again. Hallelujah. And this is why it's very important to give wow. attention. Very important to give the message of born again attention because when you are studying it, you are studying it to know why we must be born again and how to live. Because some people don't know what is born again at all and how can I get born again. That's why, you know, people, every time any preacher comes and says, who wants to receive Christ? Their hands are up. How many times are you going to do it? That means you are never certain of your being born, born again. again. So there must come a time that you ask myself, what exactly is born mm -hmm. again? And what must I do to be born again? And do it properly. Yeah. This is why you must give it attention. If you don't give it attention, you are there, oh, I know, I know, I know. And you never know. Yeah. You see? And that is dangerous. All right, before we round off, you know, we... Uh, mentioned is it that another challenge with people giving this attention is that it's as if that when you mention born again, then you're already talking about Pentecostal, charismatic, you know, like that experience I shared when I went to Windsor. Reverend, is born again a Pentecostal charismatic thing or is it for every person? Well, thank you, sir, once again. Mm. Born again is for every person mm. who comes on earth as a human. Mm. Mm. You know, the scriptures are, it's clear. Mm. In John chapter 3, verse 3, mm. Jesus said, except a man, man. be born again. 
So are you a man? Are you a man? <laughs> if you are not a man, then you are no, no. outside. Yes. But if you are a man, mm. say except a man be born again. Mm. In John chapter three verse sixteen, it says that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten mm. Son, that whosoever. Ever. So whether you were Pentecostal, mm. a charismatic. Mm. Whatever it is, mm. he said, whosoever mm. believes in him mm. should not perish, but mm. have everlasting life. Mm. In Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, mm. that if any man... <laughs> you know, so, so there are things that apply to any man, whosoever, a man, mm. you are in that thing. Mm. And born again, again is exactly. one of them. <laughs> Wow, praise the Lord. This has been awesome. You know, just before um, we give people the opportunity to receive Christ, see, this is another advantage of the glory devotion. Every day we give you the opportunity to be born again the Bible way. It is so simple. It doesn't require much from you. Jesus did all. What it requires is your belief and your confession in reality. So this morning, if you have been watching us, you don't know what is born again. And you really want to be born again, this is your time. Pastor Father, can you help somebody get born again? This uh, thank you so much, sir, for this opportunity. You just heard God's word. This is your time and this is God's desire for you. That you'll be born again. You'll become his child. How? The Bible says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus is the son of God, you will be born of God. If you sincerely believe this in your heart and confess him as your Lord, that will take place in your spirit right where you are. Mm. And I want you to pray with me wherever you are. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I confess this Jesus as my Lord. And I receive God's life into my being. I thank you that today I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, if you have done that with all your heart, truly you are born again. This is how much time will permit us on today's episode. I've been on today's discussion with our esteemed Reverend Dr. Felix Opuni and also Pastor Dr. Fazal J. And we have looked at an excerpt of the New Creation Conference 2020. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. It has been awesome being on set with you. Well, God bless you. So surely, if Jesus starts, we shall come your way again in our next episode as we look at another excerpt from the New Christian Conference 2020. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055 792-7744 or log on to our website finalglobalmovement.org Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on the screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.